Just a quick disclaimer before I start with this video, I am speaking about these topics as someone who is from a marginalised group but also as an ally to the marginalised groups I'm not a part of, namely the LGBTQIA plus community. I also touch on the disabled community in this video as well, just because my video is more broad than just what's happening with Jagged Little Pill, which was like the jumping off point for my video. So I just wanted to say that, listen to people in marginalised communities. I'm just trying to be an ally here and raise awareness and shed light on a situation. If I say anything wrong, please let me know respectfully in the comment. I am always happy to learn and grow. But yeah, disclaimer over, let's get into the video. Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about the ethical consumption of theatre, whether it's possible and when you might feel that you should choose not to see something or should actively decide to go see something. Before we get started, show of the week this week is Fun Home, so I will put a link in the description to the cast recording for you to check out. This was sparked by the controversy surrounding the show Jagged Little Pill and the rewriting and erasure of a non-binary character by rewriting them as a cis female character and the fallout, gaslighting and lying that has occurred around it. I was first made aware of this situation by a video made by Amy Lovett, so I will link her video below along with other videos on this topic by people in the LGBTQIA community. However, I will not be discussing the Jagged Little Pill controversy specifically here in detail. Amy, Cesario, Dr Drama and Mickey Joe Theatre all have excellent videos on the problem and issue of trans erasure in theatre, both with the Jagged Little Pill controversy and just in general, so I really encourage you to check out and watch those videos if you want more information on this particular situation or the issues with trans representation in theatre. My video is a bit more broad. So what I want to talk about is when do we as individuals choose to support a show or not? In general life, I am someone who believes in consuming ethically as much as possible. There are some companies that I choose not to buy from. There are other companies who I will only buy from if there is something that I really need and there is an issue preventing me from getting that elsewhere, e.g. because of the price. So yeah, that is something I personally try and practice as much as possible. And even though I know it might not make a difference, for example, I don't shop on Amazon, but I doubt Jeff Bezos knows or cares, for me personally, I think it's important to make mindful and conscious decisions on where your money and therefore your support is going. You might not be able to change a company's business practices if you're the only person choosing not to support them, but at least you can know where your money is going and you can make an informed choice on that. You can choose whether or not you contribute to what that company is doing through your money. What? <laughs> I'm just gonna move the rainbow scarf like this so it doesn't do anything weird. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Apparently me gesticulating just, just messing that up, so we're just gonna do this now. However, that's really easy when you're talking about products, goods and services that you don't have an emotional connection with. But when it comes to entertainment, like theatre, that can seem like a harder thing to do, to decide not to engage with or support something that maybe aesthetically you really enjoy. I briefly touched on the issue of boycotting West End theatres and shows in my Respect in Theatre video and the difficulties with it, especially when it comes to producers and venue owners that don't morally align with you. It's not just one person that takes the hit when you boycott a show, there are loads and loads of people who are impacted and involved in a show both financially and artistically. And with the majority of West End theatres owned by a very small group of people, 
it's nigh on impossible for a production to choose the venue that they go to based on moral or ethical concerns. If you don't like a West End theatre owner, but one of their theatres is the only theatre that's the right size for your show that has a slot, you either have to book that theatre out or you don't transfer your show to the West End. So there's not really room to manoeuvre for productions in that way. However, the situation with Jagged Little Pill, in my opinion, is very different. Not only because it's dealing with the erasing of the representation of a marginalised group, but also because of the lack of integrity shown by the creative team throughout the whole fallout of this controversy. The doubling down and the alleged lies about the content of the show both before it's transferred to Broadway and after it's Broadway transfer. Going off script, but yeah, it's just, that's the thing that I just really didn't get. As someone who isn't affected by what they've done, like I am not trans, so like I'm not personally affected by it, but I was just learning about what happened and I'm just like, why lie about the fact that you rewrote it? But we'll get into it. I agree with Amy that had the creative team been more honest and not tried to hide the rewrites and came up with an excuse of wanting to keep the original actress in the production or not feeling equipped enough to tell a non-binary person's story, I think people, audiences, the theatre community would have been more forgiving. It wouldn't have been great, for example, if you didn't feel equipped to tell a non-binary person's story on Broadway, why were you okay to tell a non-binary person's story off Broadway? But some people would have been more forgiving. Some people wouldn't have forgiven it and not supported the show anyway. And you know, you're done goofed, you just gotta deal with that. But there would have been some people who would have been like, okay, it's not great, but at least you're owning up to what you did. At least then they wouldn't have been lying about what they originally wrote. Also, they wouldn't be blaming fans for interpreting it the wrong way when it's what they originally wrote. And this situation is yet another example of the systemic issues of representation in theatre. The constant casting of cis actors in trans roles, ethnically diverse castings frequently not including South and East Asian actors, Middle Eastern actors, actors that don't look like their ethnicity through a white lens, the exclusion of disabled actors, all of these things arguably will not go away until they become unprofitable, especially for commercial theatre. So what is the solution to this problem? Let's start with actors. I think it is up to us as actors to just not take roles that are for characters in marginalised groups that we are not a part of cis actors just don't take trans roles don't take disabled roles don't even audition for it if we don't audition for those roles then we can't be cast over trans actors and disabled actors are cis or able-bodied actors not talented enough to play trans or disabled characters of course not but when trans actors and disabled actors can't even play characters in their own minority marginalized group, let alone anything else, they don't need cis able-bodied actors taking up that seat at the table. And if we don't accept or don't even audition for those roles, we can't be cast over people from that marginalized group. Let's take the L guys. Take the L for representation, it's fine. There are other roles that we can play. In my opinion, it just needs to be, at this point, treated in the same way as black and brown face and yellow face. Though loads of people seem to still think yellow face is okay. Looking at you, opera, not even opera, just, yeah. 
Don't do yellow face. Yellow face is bad. Yellow face is the same as black and brown face. Don't do it. But I think, you know, having able-bodied actors playing disabled roles or cis actors playing trans roles needs to be seen as the same thing. I think that's the only way it's going to change. And even if the industry as a whole isn't doing that, if we as actors start seeing it that way, then they'll be forced to change in terms of casting. When it comes to being in a show where there is poor representation but the character you're playing isn't stepping on any representational toes, I would never tell an actor to not take a job. I don't know anyone's financial situation. If you need a job, you need a job, right? What I would say is listen to your gut about how you feel about participating in that show. Talk through any concerns with your agent if you have one. Ask any questions that you need to. And I would also say, you know, just be as informed about the production as you can in terms of all those things. You know, try and find out if they have had an external advice or what the history of the show has been previously. So that that way, even if you're having to make a difficult decision and you're like, uh, this feels ethically dicey, but like, I need work, you at least can be prepared and come to terms fully with with what that decision en entails, so you can kind of go in with your eyes open. Also, I would say if you are involved in a show and controversy comes to light, you don't have to, you know, adamantly defend legitimate critiques of the work. I remember when there was a lot of criticism of the film Music, which I think was like written or directed by Sia, a lot of the neurodivergent community had a lot of issues with the casting of a neurotypical actress as an autistic character, the portrayal of autism and some of the really dangerous restraining practices that were displayed in the film. And Giles Torreira, who was in the film, came out with this statement kind of defending the film and defending Sia and saying that he had a great time and she was wonderful to work with. And it's kind of like, that's not the issue people have a problem with. You may have had a great time, but these are still legitimate criticisms that you as an actor don't need to defend. I feel like as actors, and again, because it's our livelihood and theatre is more than just a thing. It's a community, it's an art form, it moves us. We don't want to be involved in something that's messy, right? And so our instinct is to get on the defensive and be like, oh, but it's not that bad because da 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 da. And it's like, no, you can have a good time doing a job and it could still be problematic. You don't have to defend the problematic things. And I think that's why it's important to just be aware of what you're getting into and don't put on rose tinted glasses for the jobs that you're taking, you know? Go in being like, okay, this is really fun or this is really funny. It's hella problematic. I've made the choice to be here because of X, Y, Z but I'm not gonna pretend it's not problematic. Do you know what I mean? And if you find it so problematic that it's a problem and you can't do that, like you have to pretend that's not there to be able to do your job, then maybe you shouldn't have taken the job in the first place, but hey, it's your decision. I, I can't tell you how to live your life. That's just what I would do. Hiya, editing me. Also, if you're in a situation where you've been cast in a show and it's new writing or it's a new directorial interpretation and you see some problematic decisions being made, you could speak up about it like an ally and be like, hey, this is a bit not okay. Maybe we should think about a different way of doing that. Respectfully. So yeah, so that's also another option. By being in the room, you could probably promote some better decisions. Food for thought. If you're a theatre fan and an audience member, I can't tell you whether or not to support a show. I, it's your money. If you want to buy a ticket, then you can. However, what I would say is, for example, in the case of Jack and Little Pill, 
If you do care about equality and representation for the LGBTQIA community, then maybe think about whether your support of Jagged Little Pill would align with that, especially with the behaviour that has been exhibited in the fallout of the initial issue of a cis actress playing a non-binary trans character. Especially, and this is just me personally, Jagged Little Pill is a jukebox musical. You can listen to the songs outside of the context of the show by just listening to some Alanis Morissette. Will it be the same arrangements? No, but you can listen to the songs. So for me, I'm kind of like, you can enjoy the music of it without needing to support the show at all. Also, I would encourage you not to take my word for it. Please watch the videos I've linked in the description if you want to know more about why this is such a problem and why representation is so, so, so important and how not properly representing a group is harmful to that group. But um, yeah, please watch some videos. And this is the same for any show where anything potentially problematic is going on. Like, think critically about what you watch and what you see. I think it's so easy to be swept up in, oh, it's just entertainment, it doesn't matter. But I honestly think if we want to try and make the world a better place, the first step is to actually think critically about what we're consuming, which is sad. I would just love to be able to watch musicals and audition for shows and not have to think about that stuff and just be like, will I have fun watching this or being in this? Great, I'll do it. But it's not that simple. It's one of the things about being an adult is things aren't that simple anymore and it's it's a bummer but it's just what you've got to do and I'm not saying that that's always going to be an easy black or white decision there will be shows where you're like I don't know it's making a really great commentary about this thing but also the portrayal of this other thing is really rubbish or this is of its time and I know that context so I can see it for what it was but now it's kind of problematic. And there's not gonna be a right answer for everyone. There is no right or wrong answer of whether you should support a show or not support a show. If you really wanna support Jagged Little Pill, then go ahead. If you don't care about the representation issue, who am I to tell you that you're wrong because you don't care? But I think the one wrong answer there is is to refuse to make an informed decision about what you watch or not, especially when you are then privy to the information. If you genuinely don't know about something, then that's okay, you just didn't know. But when something's been brought to your attention, I think it's wrong to not think critically and consciously about what that would mean for you then supporting something, a business, a brand, a show, a piece of art. What conclusion you come to after thinking critically, that's your own decision and that's for you to, to deal with and reckon with, I guess. But to not think critically in the first place, I think would be a problem. So I would really encourage you to think about potentially doing that. And also, I just want to stress that this doesn't have to be a either or, like, we're going to boycott, we're going to cancel thing. I mean, I personally don't think boycott or cancellation are dirty words. And I, I think everything gets kind of muddled into one thing and what one person calls cancelling or what another person calls cancelling are like completely different. One is online bullying. <laughs> and the other one is holding people accountable until they show growth or change. I think they're fundamentally different, but that's a whole other story. But it doesn't have to be this negative thing of, oh, I'm just not engaging with that thing and it's horrible. The money that you don't spend on a show that you don't want to support, you could spend supporting another show or another cause. Jagged Little Pill isn't in the UK, but if you're in the US or whatever, 
Instead of spending money on Jagged Little Pill, you could spend the money you would have spent on a ticket for that on a ticket for a show made by trans and non-binary artists, for example. You can turn this seemingly negative cancel culture thing into something that's really positive, that is feeding a community that's actually trying to make theatre better or to uplift the voices that are so often shut out in theatre, which is a really great thing. And, you know, when you reframe it like that, maybe that's something that you would rather do instead. Maybe that would be something that would align more with your morals and your ethics. I don't know. I don't know you. I'm just talking to a camera. Um, so yeah. So those are my thoughts on the ethical consumption and or participation in theatre. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and it gave you some food for thought. I'd be interested to know your thoughts in the comments, whether it's about the Jagged Little Pill situation or just in general. I know there are a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people who believe that theatre and politics, for want of a better word, should be completely separate. I think in a perfect world that would be great, but we don't live in a perfect world and, you know, people are involved in theatre, people have interests, people have prejudices, people are messy and so when that's happening, you've got to make the decision that aligns best with you. If that's to just do whatever the heck you want without any thought to the impact on other people, that's your lookout and like, in all honesty, you do you, bro, disagree, but it's your life and I'm probably not gonna meet you, so it's fine. But if you're kind of watching this video being like, huh, I never thought about that, maybe have a think about it and come to your own conclusions. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I've said it already, but I'll say it again. Please watch the videos that I've linked down in the description. I will also be linking to some UK based trans charities which I would highly recommend that you consider donating to if you can and yeah I'll just put lots of information and links down below. Uh, woo! Uh, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did please consider liking and subscribing. Would love to have you on the channel. Come on down. Stay tuned for more theatre content from a UK perspective and I will see you all in my next video. Bye friends! Thank you.